Okay, so um, one thing that we are going to talk in this class about uh, actually surface area and porosity is so called a gas absorption. Because people can use gas absorption to reasonably accurately measure the so called surface area and porosity that become a foundation for this analysis. So that's why we talk a little bit of gas absorption. Last time we talked about uh, uh, gas gas and solid interaction and solid surface. There are two types. One is so-called uh, physics option, physical absorption, which is between the gas molecule and uh, the solid. The interaction is relatively weak. When the walls interaction, the gas absorbs onto the surface, but by a little bit of heating, the gas molecule may so-called dissolve, leave the gas surface. But there are also so-called uh, chemical absorption which is chemical absorption, which there will be some, at least to some extent of electron cloud distribution, or even partial electron exchange that makes create strong bonding and make those absorption pretty weak, but uh, pretty strong. But now let's talk about a general physical absorption a little bit, which is the basis for a lot of these gas uh, surface area analysis or poor um, to the poor volume, poor size analysis. Physical absorption. So when a gas is in contact uh, with read, degassed solid, a clean solid, okay, high vacuum, you put away the absorbed species with relatively clean surface, the equilibrium pressure and the amount of gas absorbed on the solid surface would typically satisfy certain relationship. Here we have uh, several concepts, but essentially we said if the solid surface is clean, somehow you get it clean, chemical washing and then heating to make the surface clean and pull a vacuum to make it clean. And then when you introduce gas, and some of the gas would come to the surface. So there would be a certain relationship between equilibrium gas pressure and the amount of gas absorbed onto the surface. As you can imagine, the lower the pressure, the lower the gas pressure, the fewer the amount of gas that are absorbed or covering the sample surface. Make sense? And if you are extremely high vacuum, that will be, even if you put a little bit of gas in there, as long as the pressure is not high, there will be almost no gas attached to the surface. Because why? Because you're putting vacuum, very high vacuum. The gas has a tendency to leave. Okay, so we have this solid gas molecule, typically T4 temperature, V4 volume, P4 pressure at this, let's say, a constant uh, temperature. They will typically do this at a constant temperature, li liquid nitrogen temperature or some room temperature or zero degree C, whatever. Okay, and then certain amount of volume, right? Certain amount of gas, totally certain amount of gas, certain amount of volume, and then there will be certain amount of gas molecules that are what? So-called absorbed onto the surface. And of course, a lot more would be in the gas phase, move freely, okay? And then if we change the pressure, that's what we mentioned. If we change the pressure, we keep same temperature, Total, we keep the same volume, but we increase the amount of molecules into gas molecules introduced, and as a result, we would have higher pressure. And because of this higher pressure, I have more molecules in the gas phase at the same time. Normally, normally, I would have also more molecules absorbed onto the surface, and they typically satisfy certain relationship. Okay, and going from low pressure to relatively slightly higher pressure, in this process, I have more gas coming to the surface, which we call absorption. On the other hand, if we go from higher pressure down to lower pressure, we decrease it, we pull a vacuum, at least pull vacuum for some time to get rid of some molecules, I would have less gas in the molecules in the gas phase, at the same time, I would have lower surface coverage. That's a very basic principle, okay? So 
in from experimental point of view, we can essentially measure measure the total amount of gas absorbed absorbed under different what relative equilibrium pressure. I say relative pressure because I'm using the pressure but normalized by so-called P0. Quite often P0, as you can guess, means one atmosphere, right? That's a standard pressure that normally people use. We can measure the amount of gas absorbed under different relative pressure at a fixed temperature. You do this at a fixed temperature. You can do it at zero degrees C, or quite often for physics, Absorption, we do it under liquid nitrogen temperature. Okay, and they get so called absorption or desorption isotherm. That iso means what? Same, therm means temperature, which means you do this absorption, desorption at different, uh, at the same temperature but at different pressure, you get a series of points. Each point represents how much of gas got absorbed under a given pressure relative pressure of course quite often the gas amount of absorbed that people converted them into stp amount volume but under standard condition standard temperature zero degree c one atmosphere okay and then people get something like this a curve a plot vertical axis is what Read to yourself. Equivalent absorbed gas volume under STP. So, of course, you know the gas law. You can convert from one temperature to another temperature, right? Okay, makes sense. You know how much you can do the conversion. That's your gas law. The other one, the horizontal axis, would be the relative pressure. P over P zero. When it's zero means what? It's very close to a good vacuum, right? When it's close to one means what? Not really high time, high pressure, but close to one atmosphere. Okay, we don't have to go higher because normally people don't pressurize, pressurize for absorption purpose. Okay, and then you would get okay at a zero pressure, the amount of absorbed should be what? Naturally, at zero pressure, should be low. As you increase the pressure, the amount of absorbed become typically higher. And quite often, people find that some difference between absorption and desorption. We'll go back to this later. This is so-called hysteresis. Non-repeat between going up in pressure and going down in pressure. Hysteresis. For certain material, we would see this. Okay hysteresis. But anyway, these types of curve between absorbed amount of gas and the relative pressure is called the absorption isotherm. And the, based on this, it gives us the ability to measure the material so-called surface area and also so-called porosity. We'll talk about that in a moment. Porosity. It's very critical if you are dealing with catalysis. If you are dealing with stuff that needs high surface area or controlled surface area or controlled porosity. It's very, very important for petrochemical industry, for filtration and many other things. Okay, measurement of gas absorption isotherm. The measurement procedure, quite often, actually Dr. Peggy Wang's lab will have something like this, called a gas absorption analyzer gas absorption analyzer okay it, the machine looks something like this dr peggy Wan's lab have something similar to this okay and typically you put your powder sample remember what class are we dealing with ceramics process if we're dealing with ceramic powder typically ceramic powder you degas it what do you do heat it up to vacuum to make the surface clean Make the surface clean. You start on, you want to, before you do measurement, you want to start with a reasonably clean surface. You do not want all the absorbed CO2 or moisture or whatever. Make sense? On your ceramic powder. So you pull a vacuum, heat it up, okay? 
Then, what is this? That looks like a so-called dua. People pour liquid nitrogen into this container. So after you pour the stuff hard, you cool it down a little bit and then cool further to liquid nitrogen temperature. Liquid nitrogen temperature and continue to discard the gas. Continue to pull vacuum to really you heat, remove the stuff on the surface, and then you go to really low temperature and continue to pull vacuum. And this liquid nitrogen temperature is the temperature you are going to do your absorption experiment. Okay, and then once you think you are pretty good high vacuum, you are reasonably clean, and you measure the amount of gas. Typically, people use what gas? Nitrogen gas. Now it's inert, non-polar. Makes sense? For physical absorption, this is for physical absorption. If you use oxygen, well, oxygen likes so many materials that you have strong chemical absorption. That's not what you want. You measure surface area, you want something that is weak interaction. And nitrogen gas, non-reactive and also non-polar. Make sense? That's a good ideal analysis gas. Of course, people can use um, argon or even krypton to do similar analysis, but those are slightly more um, expensive. Nitrogen is so available. Make sense? My nitrogen gas required to reach a preset equilibrium pressure at liquid nitrogen temperature. So you pull a vacuum and then you dose back nitrogen into the system until you reach a equilibrium, preset equilibrium pressure, which is below standard pressure. Start from zero, a little bit higher than zero, give it some gas. Initially, if everything is vacuum, you give some gas, what would happen? Some will be in the environment, gas phase, but some would what? Attach to the surface, absorbed. Because absorbed, your pressure, you initially reach that pressure, you are going to be a little bit lower because some got attached to the surface. Your pressure drops. So you continue to dope. Add gas to reset pressure, okay? And then pressure in a closed system. It's a closed system. Okay, you see this glass tube. And similar, the glass tube. Closed system drop due to the gas phase come to the surface attached there. So you have less free molecule and your pressure naturally drops. And because the pressure drops, now you have a pressure sensor. Now you sense, okay, the pressure drops. You continue to what? Add a little bit more gas in there. And the weight, okay, if the pressure drops again, you continue to dope until it stabilizes at your precise pressure. Okay, then you got a volume or amount of gas reading. And then you move to the next PI, next pressure. You essentially repeat step three until you get a series of points. That's how essentially how you measure it. I think Dr. Peggy Wong's lab have this for surface area analysis.